Welcome back. So we always begin with ABC. Now with ABC, these are the three things that I want you to think about any time that you're learning something new. And it doesn't even have to be learning to draw. It can be doing something new even at your own home or learning a new task or even starting something at a school or a job. A is going to be adjust. Always want to think about adjusting your body. It is really important that you adjust for comfort because if you're uncomfortable, your body and your mind are not going to actually be focused on what you need to be learning. So it's very important that you are in a comfortable position. Now in our case here for meditative drawing and for coloring, adjusting to me means not only that I'm in sitting in a comfortable chair, please don't pick the chair you're not comfortable in, pick the chair you're comfortable in. And it's also about how you hold your pen. And it's also the connection that you have with your paper. Everything that we're doing here is about a relationship. So the relationship that you have with your paper is going to be very important. People that keep their papers here steady and straight will find that they are actually doing funky things with their wrist where they kind of move things around. And the problem with that is just from a body work standpoint is that you begin to create tension in your arms all the way up to your shoulders into your neck and your body is so amazing that it will create something on the other side of your body just to stabilize you. So you want to keep it smooth and easy for yourself. And if that means that you move your paper 30 degrees, it is such an easy thing to do rather than having the paper be the boss of you. So you want to be able to move that paper so that your wrist and your arms and your shoulders are in a way that is adjusted to your comfort. And the second thing is to breathe. This is so important. And I mean breathe in and out. Sometimes people breathe in and then they hold their breath and then you're actually creating tension in the body. So you want to be able to breathe in and out in a relaxing way that allows that signal to be inside your mind and body that you're about to do something that's fun, that's relaxing, that's creative. So take a deep breath in and out. See, don't you feel better already? And C is connect. This is actually more important than you might think in a bigger way. Connection not only means the connection that you have with your pen, but it also means the connection that you have with your paper. So when I'm talking about a connection with your pen, there are different ways that we connect with our pens. And one of the things that's incredibly important is that squeezing your pen does not produce more ink. <laughs> or your pencil if you're going to be coloring. It just doesn't do it. It's amazing how many times we just squeeze the heck out of our pen hoping that it will give us some type of control over what's happening. But really what we're doing, we're creating tension in our whole body here. We're creating muscle uh, tension that goes all the way up. So again, this is about creating a connection where your pen is an extension of your creativity. And so it's having a firm hold without gripping. This is so, so important. And once you realize what you're doing, you'll also find that it's actually so much more enjoyable if you're just holding your pen in a really nice way. So it's about creating a relationship and connecting to your pen, but also you want to connect with your paper. So here's another thing with connection. Your paper is there just to receive whatever the medium is that you're using, whether it's your pen or whether it's your coloring pencil. So that does not mean pressing super hard onto your paper. You'll end up creating divots in your paper. <laughs> And your paper is not meant to be abused that way. So one of the things that you want to do is you just want to learn your tools. And the connection that you have to your tools, you'll find out later, can make a big difference on some of the idiosyncrasies that a pen can have or a pencil can have or even some of the other tools that we're going to mention. So these are things that you want to remember. You want to adjust your body and your paper for comfort. You want to breathe. Take a deep breath in breathe out and you also want to connect. You want to connect with your pen and with your paper. This relationship will have a huge impact on other things later. So let's begin our first lesson on meditative drawing. We're going to do something that everybody knows how to do, a circle. So with our pen, now I'm going to be using a technical pen here and usually with our handwriting we hold it at this angle but a technical pen is a little happier when it is held upright. So you might find that when a comfortable level moves this way, you tend to go faster. But we're going to slow down a little bit and actually hold our technical pen straight up. Now, if you don't have a technical pen and you have a ballpoint pen or a fine tip marker or a pencil, that's okay. I'd rather you use what you have than wait for something special. 
but I'm going to use a technical pen because it has this really nice little nib here that gives me a clean line so I can show you a really nice example. So let's begin with circles. Now circles, the important thing about a circle is that it doesn't have to be perfect, but what is important is this place right here. It's the beginning and the end. It's where it connects. Now I know you know how to draw a circle, but how many times have you drawn a circle and done something like this? Right here, that's overshooting. And what happens is that makes me wonder how many times in life do you overshoot? How many times do you miss the mark and just keep going? Is that your mind trying to create something fast? Is this something where your mind is trying to keep going, is trying to do something fast, or you try to whip it through? Or do you stop short? Or do you create like a, a six or a nine or some type of spiral? This to me is something when people are trying to do something fast, you'll notice that each one of these places here, the beginning and the end don't actually meet. This is very important for your own awareness, but also the relationship that you have with your pen and your pencil and your paper. So what I'm going to do here is we're just going to practice some circles. This is very important to be able to create a connection to your beginning and your end. What happens when we become aware, and even if it looks more like an egg, you know, it's a little lopsided, or even say for instance, I, I didn't have good muscle control and my lines were a little wiggly. Say I had a little circle that ended up with a, something that was more like a rock shape or a little misshapen. That's okay. This is more of a circle to me than these little mistakes here would be because this is saying that you are not paying attention to the beginning and the end. And the awareness is so, so incredibly important with beginning with meditative drawing. This has a connection to the beginning and the end. It goes all the way around. And that is when you begin to have an awareness of your connection with your pen and your paper. This is when you begin to have a connection to your intention of what you're drawing. No matter what shape that you are choosing to draw, whether it is something that is more oval or something that's a little flat, as long as I'm connecting my beginning and my end, the intention that I have around this amazing shape can be seen. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not moving so fast that I'm missing my shape. So here, let's begin to do something more like a spiral. Now with a spiral, what my preference is, is that you actually begin to do a full circle and then keep your pen going. Because what happens then is that your intention of that circle, that beginning and end, is still intact. And then you begin to move gently in towards the center. Now what happens is that you can do this in a way where you intend to have an open spiral. And this is your intention. Well, then that's a very different shape, and that's something that you're wanting to take place. If you're doing a spiral but you miss it on accident and you go this way, if you're trying to create a circle, then this is where I suggest that you create an awareness of doing the circle first. If you're trying to create an open uh, spiral, then that is something of your intention, that's your awareness. But for people that are trying to create a circle but don't, I suggest that you do your circle first and then gently move in. And what you might find is that it's just as relaxing to watch someone do a series of intentional shapes, meaning that I mean to create circles. You know that I'm going to make it all the way around to my beginning. There's something of a stability. Your mind just sort of knows that it's going to reach the beginning or the end of this circle, and it begins to relax. It knows that it's going to happen. And when you're the one that's drawing it, you get to create whether it's a spiral or a circle. You get to create whether it's small or whether it's big. You get to create a change in the scale. And so it doesn't, again, have to be perfect. It just has to be about being aware of your beginning and your end. So again, I don't want you to practice something that goes like this. I don't want it to be something where it's fast. 
because you'll notice somehow these two things begin to look different than the rest. There's something of a, a speed that was put in there that doesn't necessarily need to be. Just relax, connect with your pen, creating these amazing circles and spirals. Now let's try a little bit something different with meditative drawing that you also know how to do, which is simply a line. Now the lines that I like to talk about are a little bit different because I like to talk about confident lines. And there's a big difference in a confident line and a non-confident line in the sense that how your pen connects and creates a relationship with your paper here is very telling. So here with a confident line, I'm just gonna draw a straight line. Now, even if I have some muscle issues and I say I, I create a line that has a little bit of bumps, that's okay because that's gonna be your personal style. And that's something that will be part of your interest, part of your drawing that makes it interesting this way. So I want you to just concentrate on these places right here. It's the same thing as a circle. It's the beginning and the ending points. Now, one thing that I've learned from my students is that there are some people that, again, they begin to grip the pen so hard that they press really hard on the paper. The problem with that is that if you are working with something that actually has a nib, you're gonna damage the nib. And it's gonna to begin to either bend the nib or depending on the kind of nib that you have, this little space here, sometimes these are made out of ceramic, but sometimes they're made out of felt. When they're made out of felt, you can actually fray the end and then you don't have clean lines anymore. And so you wanna learn how to ease back. It's about having a firm touch without pushing. Pushing will damage your pen. And you also wanna think of that every time that there's a hard push or a strong grip, I've noticed that there's a pattern in the person about wanting to control, wanting to control something, and they're using their pen as a means to control this line. Well, the line can still be controlled in a relaxing way. And this is actually one of those things that you can apply to real life and every day, is that how you hold your confidence in your line can make a big difference on how you hold your confidence in your body. So, when we hold a line and we create a divot here, in other words, we hold it and we do, a, I'm, I'm gonna overemphasize this so that you can see this on camera, but when we press hard and then we do a line or then we press off, you'll notice it's almost like a period at the end of a sentence. And that's not what we wanna do because that also can damage your pen. And it also says that you're like sort of finished with that line and there's sort of this impact that takes place. But you just wanna practice just drawing straight lines, just having a beginning and an end. And you just wanna create this space where you are aware of straight lines. And that alone can be an amazing practice of just practicing straight lines. Now one of the things I recommend is don't use a ruler. Give yourself a chance to play with a straight line just with just the smoothness of your own arm. Now, let's take this idea of lines and move them to creating patterns or shapes. So if I have, say, a triangle, what I suggest is you draw each line individually. Play with that straight line all by itself. Don't do one of these things where you move it around because you'll notice not only did I overshoot here, but look at this, I'm beginning to round off my line. And that's a sign of your mind saying, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to speed through. So your mind loves efficiency. And in the efficiency, it's going to try to make things faster. But we want to do something that's a little bit more relaxing than that. So you want to slow down just a little bit. So do that by just doing one line at a time. So let's practice a few triangle shapes. And we'll just do one line at a time. And you can change the type of triangle that you're doing. You can make them long and skinny. You can try to put them between the shapes. And you can create a whole pattern, which is triangles. And you'll notice I'm rotating my paper so that it's easy for my body, for my wrist, for my, my design making. You'll notice that I'm changing the angle so that I don't have to do something like this to create a line. It's gonna be a lot harder for me to create a straight line if my wrist is in a funny position. So let's just try something that has to do with like a square. Again, try each line individually, or even with rectangles, each line individually. Now don't worry if for some reason you go like this 
and it's not exactly right angles, I would rather you practice your connection with your lines and be intentional about the shape that you're creating than worried about whether it's equal. You'll get there. Don't worry. It's practice. So let's talk also about how to connect lines just by using our confident lines through design. So one of the things you can do here is say I did a line this way and I'm drawing another line this way. One of the things that I really like to emphasize with people that are learning meditative drawing is the intention of the awareness of other lines. In other words, you want to intend that you can see that this other line is there. For example, one of the things I've noticed with students is that when I ask them to draw circles, sometimes they just begin to overlap all their circles and then they can't really see the integrity of a single circle because it's bundled up. It's not laid out in a way that they can study their own designs, their own patterns. It's almost like they're hiding their work. And you can do that if that's your intention of your pattern. In other words, you want to create overlaps of things. Well, then that's your intention. But for our purposes, what I'd like you to do is relax and do one at a time and begin to notice your lines as they begin to move through and pay attention to the other lines that are already existing. Use your confident lines by connecting them just right up against, but not crossing, a line that's already existing. What this teaches you is boundaries. When you learn to pay attention to the boundaries of lines, you begin to observe them in your own world in a completely different way. You begin to notice when someone is close to you in line. You begin to notice when someone is far away and you need to speak with them. Your boundary is something that becomes an awareness of actual everyday life. So you want to pay attention to your intention of your line, the confidence of your line. Here's another example. If, if I draw a line here, and I mean for it to connect, but it doesn't. That's something also to pay attention to. Because what this shows me here is that I pulled back just a little bit. And you want to practice going straight up to the line and then lifting your pen. Going straight up to a line and lifting your pen. Now you'll notice there's a small gap here. So it's about learning your tool and relationship with the paper and learning how to play with your confident lines. One last little note that I would like to talk about with confident lines is what I call a slash mark. And this is when you start out confident, but then it fades off. And you'll notice that there's sort of drifting away of the impact of what the ink can do or that pigment that's left down. And this can be an actual technique that I use to create sort of a feathering or if I'm drawing grass or animal hair or something like that, this is a technique that I can use to create something that's kind of interesting and amazing. But for our purposes here, I want you to practice the idea of a confident line and it is not a slash. It is not where you dash your line away. It is truly about that beginning and that end. And you want to get to where you have this feeling of confidence. Every time you know where your line is going, you know it'll be there. And this, I don't know where it will end. So let's move to a clean piece of paper here and let's just play with meditative drawing on a clean sheet. So we want to adjust our body, we want to take a breath, and we want to connect to our pen and our paper. And let's just use simple shapes that we already know. Let's begin with just doing circles or some variation. Maybe I'm going to do a little bit of an oval. Maybe I'm going to do a little bit of a spiral action. Maybe I'll throw in a triangle here in a minute. I'm going to rotate my paper so that my wrist has an easy time just drawing one line at a time. I'm doing confident lines. I'm making sure that my beginning and my ending are connecting. Simple circles, simple spirals. I'm in no rush. I'm using this as a way to simply just relax, create a relationship with the pen and the paper, learn how my pen works, learn how my muscles connect with one line at a time. This doesn't even have to look like anything. It doesn't have to produce a picture that is fantastic or something that you want to put on your refrigerator. It's just simply allowing your mind to be comfortable with simple patterns. 
with shapes that you're familiar with, changing the size, connecting my beginning and my ending points, allowing my creative side to just play with what I know. I don't have to have anything in mind. I just want to be relaxed. I want to allow myself to connect with the shapes, my intention of a circle, my intention with a spiral, my intention with a triangle. Rotating my paper, just allowing whatever to come out of the pen to create something interesting. Doesn't even have to be touching. I can do something way out here, tiny little guy. Maybe like little bubbles making their way. That's kind of fun. Look at that. <laughs> Maybe one more little triangle. Now I invite you just to kind of play. The next time that you're doodling, just see about playing with circles and connecting your beginning and your ending, your triangles, drawing one line at a time, your spirals, making a full circle, and then moving your pen inward. So how do these lessons apply to the big picture in your life? Well, you can use the ABCs in anything. You can adjust, breathe, and connect, even standing in the grocery store. You can learn how to pay attention to your start and stop in anything by just paying attention to your circles and confident lines. If you're gonna make your mark, you might as well be there. But also, adding layers of color to your day, being able to blend and explore in ways that are unique to you in your own personal style. From the drawing desk, I'm Cher Kaufman. May you find more inspiration and color in your days.